1. Okay, so this story is set 19 years ago. I remember the exact time frame because I was working at this place when the September 11 attacks happened. This place was the office of an interior designer in the big city I lived in. I had been looking for tech work, and an acquaintance had recently been hired on as office manager, so she brought me on. I was happy to land a job providing tech support and to be earning a decent hourly wage with flexible hours. But little did I know how bizarre this place was. How bizarre, you ask? Well, my acquaintance, the new office manager, was never in the office. The designer, let's call him Boss, was also rarely there. Let me tell you a little about Boss. He was an older guy, 60s easily, which was ancient to my 22-year-old self. He constantly ground his teeth and clenched his jaw. He always seemed distracted and had a general vibe of just being weird. So I get this new gig and pretty immediately find myself alone in a nice big office space with no onboarding, no training, and nothing to do. Literally come to work, surf the web for hours, and go home or to class. Every now and then, boss would randomly come in, ask me to do something vaguely tech-related, like create a spreadsheet for client names, and then he'd allow me to show him how to do the same thing. I'd do it, he'd be thrilled, and give me a bonus on the spot. Sweet, right? Right? Until boss started coming in and losing his shit about random things. Like the green ink on his printed Excel spreadsheet was the wrong hue. Or the office manager had called in and why the hell did she need the day off? Or any number of random things. None of which were my fault and many of which I had absolutely nothing to do with. Boss was ripping my ass a new one whenever he was in the office. Which became more frequently. I learned from the office manager that Boss had been cleared to return to working more hours by his psychiatrist. Wait, what? Turns out Boss was never around when I started because he had a mental breakdown and had to be advised to step back from work. So the distractedness, meds, the teeth grinding, uncontrollable stress reaction, he even did it in his sleep. It was so bad his dentist was concerned about his jaw having microfractured. Oh, great. So this guy gets back into the swing of things and takes everything out on me. I'm 22, my wife's in grad school, I need this job. But I'm feeling the stress. I'm always thinking about work. Stewing over the last thing I got unfairly yelled at about. I'm waking up three or four times a night for no reason I can think of. My wife says I toss and turn when I do sleep. This goes on for a week or two. Then boss walks in with a new handheld digital voice recorder, hands it to me, says, When I record a voice note, I want it to be saved in here as boss date note number. And I need you to show me how to use it. Okay, so this is actually in my wheelhouse, so I take the recorder, grab the manual, and start tinkering. I come up with a quick how-to curriculum, and then read a note in the manual. Voice recordings are saved in device as VR number 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 timestamp dot VRN. Once you import them to your PC, you may rename them as required. So, boss's initial request is not possible with the hardware. But there's a simple workaround. I document that as part of my curriculum, and go sit with boss to go over it. Naturally, he blows up that he can't rename the files on the device. He can't believe I can't figure this one thing out. Did I even look at the manual? He knows it can do what he wants. I just have to do my job and learn how to make the changes, and then... GRS-1, go home right now. And don't you come back until you've figured out how to do what I want. Cue my relieved but gleeful malicious compliance. I go home. And since I know what boss is asking is impossible, I never even consider returning. I don't call in the next damn schedule and I don't go in. I try to forget the whole ordeal. I do begin to sleep like a baby. Two weeks pass. I've moved on, looking for another job, doing school, normal stuff. I get a call from boss out of the blue. JRS1, you haven't been in in a while. Is everything okay? When are you coming back to work? I've got some tech issues I need your help with. I'm floored. This guy is talking to me like the last time we spoke. He wasn't screaming at the top of his lungs, spewing spittle everywhere. So I say, dude, you told me to never come back until I figured out that voice recorder thing. So I didn't come back, because that thing is never going to do what you want. Oh, that... I take it back to the store. So I'll see you tomorrow? <laughs> nope. I figured I was fired, so I've got another job. Please mail me my last check, but don't call me anymore. Thanks. Bye. And I disconnected the call laughing. It never felt so satisfying to be unemployed. 2. This happened a year ago. I am still working at this company. My supervisors, team lead, manager, and department head are all fantastic bosses, 
and they will fight for their subordinates when right. Most of my immediate colleagues are great too, and we often help each other out. Some related points to this story. I have very severe sleep apnea. After a sleep study was done, I was told I stopped breathing 69 times an hour. As a result, I tend to need more sleep than most normal people. If the following day is not a work day, I will go to bed at 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. and wake up the next day at 3 p.m. I have seven different alarms, all of which I never snooze, as I almost never hear them. Now, my bosses are aware and very understanding, and they do not mind me coming in late to work as I ultimately still get things done. Also, sometimes my work requires me to be at work at odd hours, any 12 a.m. to 5 a.m. kinds of hours. We handle infrastructure. My usual work hours are 9.30 to 7 p.m. Versus my colleagues, usually 8.30 to 6 p.m. As I had to work with clients and customers who have 9.30 to 7 p.m. work times. On to the story. Our CEO was cracking down on punctuality issues. There were some people who were abusing this, so I can't blame him. And HR was going hard on everyone. This lady who was handing disciplinary issues, we'll call her Karen knows that I am typically late to work almost every day, so starts targeting me. My manager explains my situation to her, and tells her that it was an exception granted to me. She remarks that it is entirely unacceptable and that no employee should be given special privileges, and call for a joint meeting between her, me, my team leader and manager. After insinuations that I'm just lazy and lying about my situation with sleep apnea, or that I snooze my alarms and sleep late, she states that if I am late one more time, I will receive a warning letter with the unspoken threat that I will lose my bonus for the year that was coming in two months, as it is considered disciplinary action. She then sarcastically adds, If you can't get up in the morning, sleep in the office. I was pissed for a couple of seconds, but malicious compliance stories have taught me better. A plan began to form. Malicious compliance it is. Once work ends, I head home as usual, have dinner, relax and stuff. However, this time I head back to the office, reaching at 10.30pm or so, with all of my alarms. As per office safety procedure, if there is an employee in the office, the lights need to be on, at least in the employee's immediate area. On the lights go. I set them up to start ringing from 6.30am as usual, and to ring every five minutes. I should also mention that my desk is right smack in the middle of the office, just outside HR's closed area. Also, any person with sleep apnea knows snoring is an immense issue. My snoring is so loud that it sounded like Thor was pissed. I went to sleep in my chair. Morning comes, people start coming in. It is 8.30am. My seven alarms ringing, my snoring bringing the thunder. Did I mention that I'm seated right outside HR and in the middle of the office? Karen, unable to take the noise, tries to get my colleagues to wake me up. They simply shrugged and said it wasn't part of their job scope or contract. My team lead and manager both refuse to wake me up, as he starts work at 9.30 a.m. Karen tries to wake me up, but a choking and a breathing incident happens, and it looked and sounded like I was on my deathbed. It scared her to tears. I ended up waking on my own at 10.30 a.m. Karen then complains to my department head, which I clarify that this was requested by Karen, to which both my team lead and manager corroborates. My department head deems that I didn't break any rules, and in fact, did do what she had said to, and thus had no grounds for disciplinary action. He then gives me two paid days off to rest as I was in no condition to handle clients. I found out later that the rest of HR were never agreeable putting me on the late list in the first place, but did not and could not intervene as they were not in charge of disciplinary issues. No one has really hounded me about punctuality again outside of the occasional, hey, try to be on time next time. Just to assure everyone, I do try my best to. 3. There was a teacher in high school who really didn't like me. I never really knew why, but she was often cold and bitter to me specifically, which was noticeable. She was young and very pretty, even married a student after he graduated a few years after I left. So we were reading some general school read book in class. All had handwritten numbers in them to keep track of kids turning in books. Week after turn-in, she comes to me. Weeks after my house caught fire, I was living in a hotel. Not burned down, but a room was badly damaged and smoke toxins made the house unlivable for months. Says I never turned in my book. 
Though I know I turned it in because I remembered tracking through all the cold ashy house to my room to grab all my books. And I remembered hand in day because I apologized it smelled a bit like burnt furniture. Melted cushion smell you never forget. I repeated said memory of this to her and she didn't seem to have it and doesn't remember that. Fine, I'll go through the books with you. Mine had a different cover than the majority as it was an older edition. Only a few others in my class had a similar cover, so it wouldn't be difficult, right? Oh, well, I don't have time for that. You owe the school $15 or you won't graduate. Eh, uh, what? My family wasn't poor, but we were just dishing out tons of money for house repairs and replacement of everything deemed unsafe because smoke toxins. I didn't know what to say. She was accusing me of something I clearly handed in and threatening my graduation over $15 when I knew the book, especially in the years of student wear condition, wasn't worth more than a dollar. It was $7 new. So I get my dad to bring me to a couple of local used bookstores and thrift stores in the city over. Lord behold the damn book, in similar condition, if not better, newer cover. Buy it for what you know, 50 cents. Very common school read book. I turn it in the next day, cause no way I'm giving this lady $15 for an old used book. More by principle at this point. She wouldn't accept it. Yelled at me for even attempting to get out of it easy or something. So I went to the kindest, gentlest lady you'd meet. She literally would give you the shirt off her back, and did to a teacher who says she loved her shirt. Next day comes in with a wash shirt she wore yesterday and gave her the shirt. She was her counselor's secretary but better than any counseling the school had to offer in my opinion. I was crying over how mean the teacher was being and seemed unfair. I unload the whole story because she was easier to talk to than any official at the school. I had never seen a gentle lady like her get angry before. Little old lady got up and said, wait here. She grabbed her wallet and marched out. At this point, I'm feeling guilty as I didn't want her to pay it for me, but she looked pissed. I only found out later from students in her class at the time that the secretary motioned her outside of the classroom, closed the door quite loud. Afterwards, she said she took care of it, said that teacher actually had no authority to threaten my graduation without a higher authority in the system agreeing, and not to worry. She said how disappointed she was in her behavior, talked about her like a child. Over a weekend, my dad took us shopping for new clothes. All ours were deemed toxic by insurance, and insurance gave us $500 each to get new clothes. Being frugal, I had $250 left over as I got mostly thrift store or clothes on clearance. I bought her a nice shirt on sale I knew it fit, and a keychain that said number one secretary. I got along with most teachers I had. Ones I didn't still weren't rude to me, were actually kind after the fire. Except the one. I knew the principal's boss well too. Was kind to many students and was close to my older brother. After he heard about it, apparently they instated a new rule after I graduated that teachers couldn't take away graduation or any permission without written agreement among principal or higher. Not just verbal as before. I still pop in from time to time to see the secretary and only her. After my youngest sibling graduated, I've seen her less. But if I'm in town, two hour drive to see my dad, mom passed after a second house fire from injuries. She still remembered me eight years later, still had the keychain, still super sweet, knew about my mom dying because of my younger siblings. I even said she wished there was a funeral because she wanted to be there for me. We opted out of a funeral because the family was not getting along, cremated her and gave her mom the ashes. As for the teacher, she still teaches there. 4. A little background. I'm a retired state park supervisor, and this happened a couple of years before I retired. The way the department is organized is that there are three divisions, parks, maintenance, and administration. The parks is responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of a park. Maintenance handles major construction and repair projects, the motor pool, equipment maintenance, etc. And administration handles the budgets, hiring, legal contracts, and so on. The parks in an area are in a group with a group manager, with a maintenance group with its own manager for support. The manager titles fell under administration, so someone with that title could be assigned to either parks or maintenance. So on to the story. Our longtime group manager retired, and we waited to see who the new manager would be. It was never a quick process, bureaucracy in action. But after several months, a new guy was appointed as our group manager. He came in from another region, really excited about the promotion. 
but had never worked at a park just in maintenance. About a month after he got there, it was time for the spring meeting of our group supervisors and assistant supervisors. This is where he announced that we were going to go by the book from now on. All overtime requests had to be approved by him first before any overtime was put in. Additionally, work schedule changes for us and our staffs had to be approved by him with at least one week's notice. Now, technically, he was correct. Those are the rules for state employees, and what he was used to. But we had always been more flexible out of practical necessity. One of the things about the park side was that during camping season, we were required to have a supervisor on site 24-7, so we lived in our parks. It wasn't too bad. We had a cabin which doubled as our headquarters, and it saved a lot on travel. The downside was that you had days where you were sleep-deprived, since some nights she'd woken up to take care of some problem. Once the camping season was over, we were generally working from home at our group headquarters, or helping out in the maintenance group with repairs in the parks. Our previous managers had all done some time in the parks, so they knew what it was like. They told us to just take care of whatever issue happened, and then email any incident reports and overtime requests to them the next day. They considered staff scheduling to be our job. Our staffs were seasonal employees, college students, retirees, etc. And in order to accommodate various appointments, family issues, etc. We'd allow them to swap days with each other or to make up lost time. As long as staffers worked their 40 hours and the park was staffed, everyone was happy. But that was not going to be allowed any longer. His other policy change was that we were to call him immediately if we had to call in the police, the fire department, forest strangers, game wardens, an ambulance, or directed someone to a clinic for a medical issue. We all tried to talk him out of this, but he wasn't budging. A lot of shared looks, eye rolls, and shrugged shoulders resulted, as we all reached the same conclusion. After the meeting, my assistant asked me what I thought. I said, He's really, really going to regret this. He has no idea what he's in for. Once the season started, he found out. Oh boy, did he find out. He got phone calls at all hours of the day and night, seven days a week. Someone woke us up at 1am with a complaint that we had to go address. Phone call requesting overtime. My kid's sick. Where's the nearest clinic? Phone call. Called the police to deal with some drunk idiots. Phone call. Bear in the park. Had the game wardens in. Phone call. Every time we got asked to handle something outside of normal hours on his list, he got a phone call. He asked for it. He got it. With all the calls from every supervisor and assistant in our group, I don't think he got more than one or two nights of uninterrupted sleep a week. And I heard his wife wasn't happy about the constant calls to their house. To add to his workload, we made sure to send him emails documenting the reasons for each phone call. We sent in forms we'd been told years before weren't required. New guy hadn't requested them, but why should we leave it to chance? He was tied to his desk answering the phone, and trying to read the flood of emails, forms, and reports he was getting. We were following his instructions to the letter, and then some. This went on for about five weeks, and then we got an email from him. He was resigning as our group manager and going back to his old job in maintenance. It had taken us just a little over a month to break him. I heard he was a lot happier back there, and I hope he learned the truth of the old saying, be careful what you wish for, you might just get it. 5. About one and a half years ago, I worked at a bar-type place that was pretty small, but got really busy at night, and besides the two owners, there was only me and one other worker who was considered the manager, let's call him Kyle. I was paid $10 an hour, and Kyle was paid $15 an hour, which didn't really make much sense because for the most part I did all of the work. I served customers, ran the register, stocked and kept track of what we need, cleaned the entire building at the end of the night, and also cleaned the parking lot of the building since our customers would often litter all over the place. Kyle really just sat in the back and made whatever orders me or the mayors gave him. We were open from noon to 2 a.m. every day, important. Kyle and I worked from 6 or 7 p.m. to 2 or 3 a.m., depending on how busy we were. He would work the entire shift if the owners had something to do that day. Now, Kyle was an absolute terror to work with. He was always bossing me around and telling me something had to be done when I was already extremely busy. Always saying something wasn't done right, 
or if I had a little extra free time, he would try to put some of his workload on me. Or if the owners let me have a good break, he would say I'm slacking off. Basically just constantly messing with me and making me mad. I consider myself to have great customer service, so I would never let it get to me while I was at work, and always tried my best not to get mad. Now the owners often go on vacation a few times a year. This time they were going on vacation together for a week, and Kyle was scheduled to work every shift from open to close. No problem for him since he's done it before. One of the owners also told us his brother would be coming in to watch over things, but he didn't really know how to run the place or make anything, so one of us were to always be there to make sure everything was good. Kyle and I both had no problems with the plan, and we spent that night getting everything prepared for when the owners would be gone. Next day comes, and I get a call at 11.30am from the owner's brother. He asks where Kyle is and says he isn't answering the phone. I call and get a hold of him, and he can't come in for some unknown reason. Okay, whatever, I'll cover your shift. I get ready, go into work, and cover his shift. I was still a little new to making everything, so it took me some time to get the hang of it, but after a few hours everything went smoothly. Especially since our day people were regulars and they all knew me. By the end of the night, I had worked 14 hours and was extremely exhausted, so I decided to just sleep in my car and drive home when I woke up. Well, of course I wake up the next morning and Kyle calls me saying he can't come in again. I give the owner's brother a heads up and go home and get ready for work again. Day three rolls around and of course Kyle can't come in again. By this point I was beyond pissed, I have my own life, and I have things that I actually want to do besides just work and sleep. I was pissed for a little bit until I realized what I can get out of this if I just work the entire week for him. I call Kyle back and ask why he can't work. He didn't give an answer, of course. And then I tell him that if he has something going on, I can cover the rest of the week for him, no problem. So we won't blow up his phone anymore, and he had no problem letting me. I told the owner's brother what the new plan was, and, while he was mad at Kyle, he said he would take my side on the whole thing when his brother came home. So for the rest of the week I came in every day at 11.30am and worked until 2.30am. The owner's brother would come in and help out wherever he could and would run the register for me when we were extremely busy. The week ended up going great. Me and him never fell behind on work even when it got busy. The owner's brother also realized that having a manager was completely pointless, since I did almost all the work in the first place for $5 less. The manager comes back and guess who finally shows up for work? Kyle. He comes in acting like he did what he was supposed to and that everything went as planned. And I went along with it during the shift and decided to keep my comments to myself for the end of the night. And once closing time came around, I let everything loose and the owner's brother was right there to back everything up for me. They were both so surprised because he had never done anything like that before. Now I was only doing all of this because for that week I would have gotten a really hefty paycheck because I ended up working over 90 hours. We were paid under the table. The owners were quite generous and ended up paying me for all the hours at the $15 rate, which I didn't expect but really enjoyed. Then they took it a step further because of the brother's comments. Kyle ended up getting his ass handy to him and was fired that night. And he didn't make a single penny for that entire week. Not too long after that, they hired a new guy at the same rate as me, and also stripped the manager position so nobody working there had any control over me, except for the owners, who now had a new respect for me and just let me do my own thing. I also proved to them that I am able to work a full shift, and got as much hours as I wanted. Hey everybody, Halfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Revenge's Ice Cream, number 43. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. <sighs> okay. I think I'm finally getting back into my <laughs> recording properly. Usually my recording sessions go quite swiftly. Um, but you know, so lately, the past few weeks, I've just I've been very lazy. Don't get me wrong, I've gotten everything done, and I, I haven't been struggling to get the videos up on time. That's been fine. It's just my recording sessions have kind of went on for the whole day when they really didn't need to. So that's good. It's good to know that I can do it the proper way. I did take a break before recording tonight to watch the final episode of Picard. No spoilers, I have uh, many strong and mixed feelings about it. Uh, some angry, some curious. Yeah. 
Uh, well, like I say, I won't spoil it, but there were things they did that were unnecessary. Okay, and with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves.